All right, y'all, if you want, if you're a DIYer and you do basic DIY electric and you wanna be able to have a disposal and a dishwasher, this is probably something you're gonna run into at some point and you're probably gonna be tripped out about it if you don't know about this. So we're gonna start by reminding you all that I am not an electrician. I am a general contractor, but I am not an electrician. So take this with a grain of salt, always do your research, make sure you're safe, comfortable, prepared for the projects that you're doing. Okay, let's get into it. What we're doing today is, I had had this house rewired, roughed in. And so we have some of the things in place and then some of the work like the trim out afterwards we're doing ourselves. And so some of this is existing wiring, but if you run into this, it, you can pick up where we're at. So we're going to have a sink here and we're gonna have a dishwasher here. Let's check it out a little more. This is gonna be our sink. This is gonna be our dishwasher. This is our switch. So we want the switch to flip on our disposal, but of course, because you have that plug under the sink, you want for your dishwasher to always come on when you push the button to run your dishwasher, right? So we have to make this light switch, which is gonna control our disposal, control our outlet, which is gonna be under the sink, and this outlet needs two functions. So half of the outlet has to only have power when the switch comes on for our disposal. But half of our outlet needs to always have power running to it because we don't wanna to have to flip on the switch and run our disposal for our dishwasher to work, correct? Okay, so how does that happen? Basically, we're gonna wire that switch to go down to our outlet and then we're gonna do a double function on our outlet. Here's the trick. To double function your outlet, what you're gonna do is you've probably even never noticed this if you don't do a lot of electrical work. See that little metal tab between the two? There's one on each side. We're gonna break off the one on our hot side and we're gonna basically install this in a way that it's almost like you had two different outlets there. One's gonna be controlled by the switch and one's gonna be powered all the time because the power current is always gonna be going through it. And this is gonna make it where the same signal isn't going between the two by breaking off that little tab. So what is gonna suck about this project is the way this wall was framed. This is an old triplex that I bought. This is a basement apartment. These walls were furred out on the foundation. Instead of putting the studs like this, like you normally would expect your two by four, so you have three and a half inches plus your half inch drywall, about four inches of an electrical box, we have a shallow electrical box here. And so for my switch, I have two things going on here. We have two sets of wires. We have our power coming in and then our power going to our box down below. You're gonna notice they look a little bit different. Our power coming in, we have the black, the white, and the new, or the black, the white, which is our neutral and our ground. Now going on to our outlet, we have black, white, and red. And there is a ground, but it's already tied in with this ground. My electrician did that for me. And so we have a neutral, now our black and our red are hot. It's almost like we just have two wires, two hot signals going. One's gonna control one portion of the outlet and one's gonna control the other portion. The bummer here for me is I have to be able to fit in this shallower box the back of my switch and all this wiring, which has just been the situation with this whole apartment. So it's a little bit less fun. I'm gonna run into some hurdles you're not simply because of space. We can make it fit, we can make it work. It, it just sucks a little bit, it's not fun. So we're gonna go ahead and start wiring our switch. Before we start, I wanna show you a couple of things. So the big thing is, I can tell you just from looking at this, but if you maybe had, a, I don't know, a setup where you weren't sure coming in, my electrician had labeled this. So he put the red, that means that's where our power's coming through on this black wire. And then this is going out, I know this is going to my switch because this is my, um, it has the two hots, it has the black and the red. If maybe you had more wires in here, maybe then you were feeding another line or something else, you might be a little bit different of a situation. So right now everything is off. And so to determine where your power is coming in to figure out how you're gonna wire your switch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go turn our breaker on. So I've turned my breaker on, this is a hot outlet now. And so I just know it's this one. So see, I'm getting red. Okay, so that's the one that's labeled. So I need to know that to know how I'm gonna wire this to have it make sense. So I'm gonna check all of these. These all have nothing, right? Because the power's coming in here and we need to know that before we set it up. So separate everything out and diagnose where your power is coming from and then go back and make sure you turn your power off. So now see how it's green? 
everything's off. Now here's what we're gonna do for our switch. Now we have two ground wires between the two and they've already been connected together and we have our pigtail sticking out. I'm gonna put both of my neutral wires, I'm just gonna cap those together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of my hots from this wire, my black and my red, on the top and bottom. But what I have to do is I have to, I want there always to be a current flowing through to half of my outlet down there, right? So I have to supply that. And so we're gonna put those two blacks together and we're gonna put a third pigtail off so it's always connecting that current and we're gonna attach to there. And so then we're gonna make it where the switch basically just operates for the red and then we'll connect the red down on the outlet. You'll see it as we go. All right, so let me go get some wiring nuts. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna start exposing. Well, I wanna make sure I, it's nice to have spare wire, but if you have too much wire, it's gonna be really a lot harder than it's already gonna be to fit everything back in the box. So we have to make a decision about how much of this wire we need to do what we're trying to do and how much of it we can trim off. So we've trimmed our wires down, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start stripping the ends so that we can curl those around the outlet, or not the outlet, the switch. So again, just to show you, because we did our, and we have our red flag, but we also um, tested it when we turned it on for a minute and found our power. We have our power coming in, and then this is what's feeding our outlet. So what we have to do is we have to make a little connection piece that can go, because we have to make sure that the hot on half of the outlet is always on. So this has to always be connected to that piece but then I still have to be able to connect it into my switch. And if I connect those two together, then I can't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a scrap piece. This is just the piece I trimmed off and I'm going to unsheathe or strip both ends. And then we're gonna take a little nut and we're going to put those together. And normally I'd make this a little bit longer but I just don't think I have the space in my box. And I like to, once I tighten it all down, tug on each little wire just to make sure that they're in there well and they're not coming loose because once we try to shove it in, it's going to, they're gonna have to fight for their life a little bit once we try to fit everything in that box. So then this is the actual little wire we're working with for our switch. And then we're gonna put our two white wires together So apparently I had my camera off and I didn't realize it. So we have put our hot, our black hot on the top of our uh, switch. And we have put our, our black pigtail after we joined them all together. We've put our red hot on the bottom. And then now, and again, I've, I've made this shorter just cause I know I'm gonna have a hard time fitting this in this undersized box. You may not be in that situation if you have a normal size electrical box. So hopefully you're not. So. Now I'm gonna go ahead and curve my grounding wire to put that on. I'm gonna pinch it down and I'm gonna tighten that on there. The least fun part for me begins where I just have to fit this all back into this box. Now the other thing I'm gonna show you is because this box was not, I guess, carefully placed, See how big of a gap we have right here from the back of the box to the front of the drywall. Now they have full spacers you can put on there, which probably is the correct answer. But in my case, what I have is these little spacers so that I can put these behind. It kind of shows you a picture right here. I can put them behind the screw and support this so that my outlet's not sunken really, or my switch isn't sunken far in the wall and then the plate's sticking out here. So I have these little spacers I can use. The problem with using the spacers is if you use too many of them, it's such a big gap that the screw that comes with the switch or the outlet actually will not reach. And so then you have to go to your home improvement store and get a longer version of those screws to be able to reach and grab the box. So something you might run into if you're in this situation. Something hopefully you don't and probably won't. So I'm just seeing lengthwise if these are gonna be 
I don't think my other ones are gonna fit, but I can start and then I can see whether the ones in there fit or don't fit or will reach or will not reach. So I'm just gonna start trying to fit all of my wires into the shallow box, which is, ugh. It was less bad than I thought. I've been doing these all over this apartment and they have been a nightmare. But my screw is not gonna reach, my little screw that came with my switch, so I'm gonna have to use spacers and take these off. So just to show you the difference, they have all different lengths. You can even go longer if you have to. This is the screw I took out. This is the screw I'm replacing it with. Just a little bit longer to reach that box since we're spacing it out. And then I try to just eyeball before I start. Sometimes I start this and didn't do the right amount of spacers. But before I start, I'll try to just piece a couple together and see how many I needed to make up that thickness. Usually you can get to get the gist. So I have my little spacers ready for the top and the bottom, the amounts that I think that I need. I'm gonna have my drill, I have my screwdriver in my pocket. I had my longer screws and now I don't know where I put them. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our screw through our outlet just like you would. And then we're gonna put our spacer on the back side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Now, if you have ever over tightened your electrical cover plate, you know these break really easy. They have a little bit more expensive version that is nylon and it is much less likely to break when you over tighten it. So that's something that is a good option to look into if you are over tightening and breaking your plates all the time. Now our switch portion is done. We're gonna go ahead and go work on the outlet portion now. All right, I am back. It is tomorrow from yesterday when we started the switch up here, the first portion of our disposal wiring. And so now we're going to wire our outlet down at the bottom. So the first thing we always wanna do is make sure it's off. I've turned it off at the breaker, but let me grab a tester. All right, so, so now we only have the one wire coming in, right? We have our neutral, which is our white. We have our black and our red, which are our two hots. and we have our ground. We have to break this little tab out over here. I'm gonna see if I can just do it. I don't have like a needle nose or anything with me, so I'm gonna see if I can do it with this and just bend it out. So I'm hoping I can just bend this and get it out. Got it, took me a second. Maybe look up a video and see if there's a trick on the best way to do that, because I definitely did not do that the nicest way I should have. Okay, so see how those are not connected? Those two brass sections, they're connected there with that tab. Now be careful, because mine broke at the front of the tab, but the back still was connected first, and then I had to go the rest of the way, so make sure you have that connection fully broken. So now what I'm gonna do, because I have one wire, one Romex set coming in, I'm gonna put my red my black and then that will make one always on and one controlled by the switch and then i'm going to put one of my white wires over here and then i'm going to close up this one because i don't need it and we're going to attach our ground so let's go ahead and tighten the bottom neutral wire screw we are sitting in the cabinet fortunately the sink's not in yet so this isn't horrendous all right check it one more time okay so we are going to trim this down because again now we have i in this case i have a 20 amp outlet and so it's a little bit thicker and i have my shallow box again but i also have my shallow box and extra drywall so i have my spacers and i have my longer screws because i know this probably isn't going to reach and so before i start i can just go ahead and remove these screws because i know i'm going to need to use taller ones longer ones you know what i mean cool okay so i can move them out to work on it and then i can shove my excess back in there a little bit
putting my red on the top. My black will always be on, so we're gonna put the dishwasher on that. And then my red will be the one that's controlled by the switch, and that's gonna be the one that we're gonna put the disposal on. So we have our brass. I have chosen to make my top my switched option and my black my always on. Now I'm gonna go ahead on this side, on my white or silver screw, I'm gonna put my neutral, my white wire. And then we're gonna put our ground, which is our unsheathed wire, the copper, that's gonna go on the green. So we're gonna shove as much of that excess up there as we can so we're not fighting it to put this in the box. And then I'm just gonna look at right here, I can see how big of a gap I have. Partially I have a gap because of my drywall and this box being set farther in it. But I also have a gap because of the thickness of the back of this cabinet, which is gonna be a bit of a blessing to me. I probably should do a spacer on here to space this out, but um, I don't have one here. So I'm gonna use these little spacers for my connection. The thing is we might not need the spacers actually because if these, these are meant to catch on the drywall. And so if those catch on our actual cabinet, So I can tell you here, I'm definitely gonna use an oversized plate because this is an ugly cut in the back of my cabinet. And um, so I don't have one, I'm gonna to have to get an oversized plate. But I am going to test everything and make sure that half is always on and half comes on with the switch and nothing weird is going on. So we'll go turn it on and test it out. I'm going to turn the breaker back on. I don't have a tester here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my charger for my um, battery, so it's on on the bottom. See that red light? And when I flip the switch, it's on no matter what. Now I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna put it up here. And it's not on. Flip on the switch, on. Charging, cause it's flashing. Flip off the switch, it's off. So there we go.